and welcome to another episode of Around the Verse. I'm Sandy Gardner. And I'm Chris Roberts. In today's update, we'll see what the character team has been up to and take a whirlwind tour of the Stanton system with environmental art. But first, we wanted to give a shout out to all the pilots who have been in the action at Jump Town. Yes, it's been very cool. We've all been sort of watching this uh, in CIG around the world, having uh, a lot of fun seeing this emergent gameplay uh, pop out. So those of you that don't know, uh, Jump Town is a drug lab that's uh, hidden somewhere on yellow. You have to, it's not Mark, you have to find it. But if you go there, that's where you can buy Widow, which is uh, if you're trading in the verse at the moment, that's the most profitable thing to trade. So with uh, three, three, five, six, slash seven, uh, now you can buy ships uh, with money that you're earning, or you can buy ship weapons or items or uh, that kind of stuff. And so there's a much bigger reason to make some money and people are kind of getting into uh, making money. And so one of the ways obviously is mining, which everyone knows about, but you need a prospector for that. The other way would be buying goods and selling them elsewhere and Widow's the best way to, to make money. So, uh, you know, people have figured out that Jumptown's the place to go to make money. So a lot of traders have been heading to Jumptown uh, and buying Widow, but then a whole bunch of people that like to sort of play the other side of the law or the pirates figured out that that's where everyone was going. Uh, and they were so spending they money in. on the window, Widow, right? Mm -hmm. So they were spending their UEC on the Widow so they could buy it and then sell it for more. And then the pirates were jumping them mm -hmm. uh, to rob the Widow from them or just, you know, cause grief or whatever. Uh, and then on top of that, um, other players were coming out to, uh, you know, cover the backs or protect the, the honest traders. And so we had this whole kind of emerging game cycle of uh, warfare between these various groups that are either protecting or attacking uh, uh, players around um, uh, Jumptown on Yella. And uh, it's really cool. A lot of people have been sort of streaming the action. Uh, they've been playing together in groups, which is like one of the cool things about Star Citizen and using, uh, you know, the, the, the FOIP and, uh, you know, the, the comms. Uh, and uh, having a great time together, uh, you know, people manning the turrets on the hammerheads and yeah, I've seen that people, cutlasses. There's yeah, that having thing. yeah various groups, people on the ground, people flying spaceships, doing combined arms, on foot combats, uh, dogfighting. Uh, so it's 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 really a little microcosm of some of the real uh, you know the potential of what you can see in Star Citizen, and uh, I think it's cool because people are getting to see it and go, oh yeah, okay, I can see where. What, what can happen in this, in this game. Uh, and uh, for us, it's been a lot of fun watching uh, this happen. It's been going on now for like a few weeks uh, and uh, it's, it's really, really cool. So. Yes, definitely. So whether you are a pirate, a mercenary or an org trying to defend the location for safe trade or otherwise, we're actually really enjoying all of the videos and yep. streams cool. and images as Chris suggested. So keep sharing your jump town exploits uh, on the community hub. Yes, yes. De definitely. Please do that. It's, yes. uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, strap in because we're going to take a trip all around the burgeoning Stanton system to look at recent progress on various locations and features. Uh, last week, uh, we got a look at the uh, central business district in Lawville. And so this week, we're going to uh, go back to the central business district. So why don't you uh, check out some of that right now? environment team has really been adding the finishing touches. Previously when we showed it there was some work in progress stuff. The statue for instance that has been looking a lot better and they've been uh, you know doing the final materials as well as that they've been working on the sound so they've been working on uh, the ambient sounds and also Pedro has been composing specific 
uh, music for the central business issue to give it a very distinct flavor uh, compared to say the the common worker area of the city which is what you you know l19 that you've seen before or uh, tisa spaceport so uh, it's really cool it's a completely different flavor you can as you uh, arrive at the big building there's this you know this you get this huge grandeur i mean it's four kilometers high it's bigger than any building in, in our earth right now and uh, yeah it's just all built to impress and be opulent and it's very different than the rest of lawville which is uh it's really cool. Yes, it's very cool. And the props team has been fine tuning their contributions to the CBD as well, like these huge statues that Chris just mentioned that immortalize Hurston's founding fathers. Yes, uh, much higher. They look better now. Yeah, much higher resolution than the, the work in progress stuff that was shown uh, previously. Now, looking ahead to early next year, we're going to continue our tour of uh, the Stanton system and go to our corp. So here we can see some. Uh, white box R&D that's been done by Ian Leland, who's the art director of Star Citizen, on uh, city block biomes for the planet itself, because uh, yeah, our corp is almost entirely covered by man-made structures. So we've been looking at how we can use our newer planet tech, which has improved from last year, and sort of have uh, the kind of more man-made and manufactured biomes, as opposed to sort of organic ones that you've sort of seen around Hurston, we're really looking at trying to get a much better sense of scale and also variety and detail in the buildings. And you can just really look out and see a whole skyline and you also have a variety of hats. So as you see in this video, you can see from sort of far distance coming down, you can see, you know, for a huge distance, um, you know, the sort of small outer area suburbs around Area 18, these huge buildings that you can fly in, there's like Art Corp Tower. Uh, and there's a just really great sense of uh, scale uh, and it's significantly more impressive than, than what we were showing when we showed the R-Corp prototype last year. So I, I think by the time we release it uh, for you guys to fly around with, it's going to be a really cool experience. Um, so we're pretty excited by uh, how it just gets better. Yes, very cool. And here we see further visual work on the icy moon of Lyria. Very, very cool. Um, all right, so carrying on our tour, we're leaving Art Corp now. We are going uh, a, little few, a little further in the timeline of our development of, of uh, next year in Star Citizen. Uh, but here is uh, Microtech. We're looking at a biome that the art team's working on. So we're doing exploration on Microtech. So it is the coldest of planets in the Stanton system. There's, uh, you know, so we have a Microtech, Art Corp, Crusader, and Hurston. But Microtech uh, had a terraforming accident, so it's a little colder than the other ones, uh, but it's not completely covered in snow and ice. So we're also looking at other areas that would be sort of like Nordic forest land or that kind of stuff. Uh, so this is some exploration that the art team's been doing. And you, know, you, you can see here a very different feel than say the savannah of Hurston. And so it's cool, and as we start to flesh out these biomes, on uh, you know planets like Microtech or uh, future ones that we do, uh, just you can sort of see the potential of the variety and the beauty that will be in this. So. Yes, going back to 3.4 over on Levski, finishing touches are being put on our new mission giver, Wallace Klim, who is definitely not the most reputable character in the verse. Yes, looks like he's been dealing and maybe using some widow himself. But speaking of characters, uh, we've been working on adapting existing armor that's been designed for male characters to their female counterparts. Yes, here's Josh Herman, Gage Hallman, and Jeremiah Lee with more details on the process. With the female player character deep in development, we're working really hard here on the character art side to make sure that all the female assets are one-to-one -one and have parity with the male assets. This is a little bit of process, but it's definitely a lot of content to create. Uh, it's really important for us to make sure that the female has all of the same assets that the male does because we want the players have choice to make sure that whatever gender they choose that it's equivalent of. Starting the process for conversion, the character artist would blend shape the male armor to the female body. And we did this by essentially making a similar topology version of the male and female that can then blend shape between them. And a blend shape is essentially just morphing um, one object into another shape without changing topology at all. And we had this sort of unified body that could morph between the male and female. And then we would apply, like basically a wrap deformer in Maya 
that would then morph the male's armor in its entirety down into the female shape. So you want to make sure it still fits the modular volumes after they've acquired the proper shape and size. And the modular volume will allow us to apply all the armors on top of every single undersuit, which sounds simple at first, but is very tedious to keep an eye over. So we need to make sure that they all fit on top of the exact same shape and all the undersuits that were changed to the female body fit within that volume so that then as soon as you just start turning these on, they will all fit together just right off the get-go. Tech Art will then take it from there and they will skin it up, um, set up the runtime rigs, make sure it's working properly within the game and then hand it off to design, um, our local design guy Brett, and he will then handle the unification, which is probably one of the bigger steps because it has very wide implications. So he'll make sure that you get the unified item that will then switch between male and female um, according to what you play as. Luckily, we've been preparing for this for a long time, so there will be minimal impact on our pipeline. Uh, what I'm excited to see is the new concepts that will come out that accommodate male and female, um, armor, clothing, or any wearables. In addition to armor, we're also doing clothing. We're trying to make all of our assets, or as many as possible, one-to-one -one with our male and female. We are still exploring other options that would be specific to each gender, and realistically, it'll probably be 99% one-to-one, -one, but we want to have the option to explore that as well. There will be plenty of bespoke clothing for male and female uh, in the future, and we actually have some backed up, actually, ready to be made. Um, but because we have that, the tech and also the assets ready, um, we can plan to see a lot in the future. Uh, armor is a, a different beast. In the concept phase, we try to keep our armors gender neutral, so we won't have like a breast cut uh, for females that you see in most games, or in other. and also for males, you might see like you know the abs and the, the male chest. Like so, we try to refrain from those type of design language because we have to have the armors fit. Um, and look aesthetically pleasing and functional for both sexes. So the concept you see right now uh, is Hurston management and it looks vastly different than what you've seen in the game. And the reason why is because uh, this, these guys are on a completely different scale uh, than just regular Hurston workers or Hurston security. And these guys have a lot of money. Um, and so what we wanted to do was um, the key word, the key terminology that was used when concepting these guys was old money. Uh, I was thinking of uh, Rockefeller. Uh, that was actually the main key uh, figure that I was looking at uh, when I was doing my research. When I was talking with Josh Herman, our art director, about which direction we should go, um, he, he was just like, dude, just gotta go with old money. Uh, and then I thought, what would be in our past the most interesting era to get into and the 20s uh, screamed straight at me. And the most difficult part for me was actually how do I make the 20s look sci-fi? Because this game is 900 years in the future and if I just do 20 stuff, it'll look like we went back 80 to 90 years, close to 100 years in the past. And so finding the charm of the 20s but using the cuts and inter interesting shapes of, of the sci-fi world that we have now, uh, I fused those together and came up with these, these shapes and these clothes that you see right now. When it's all said and done, what we're looking for on the female assets is something that looks just as good on the female as it did on the male. We're not looking to spend a ton of time redesigning or recreating all these assets because they all already look pretty great. We're not looking to femaleize or hypersexualize this. We want it to be one-to-one -one and make sure that it's just as good as it was on the male and that it's overall pretty gender neutral. Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you. And that just about does it for us this week. Thank you, as always, to the subscribers who make it possible for us to bring you these shows. Yes, and as always, thanks to the backers, uh, all you guys, because none of this would be possible without you. Yes, that is very true. Make sure to tune in next week as we have some fun stuff to share. Yep, and until ho then... Hopefully 3.4. We'll yes, 3.4 and other stuff. We will see you, you. until then. Yes. Uh, ready? Around the Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.